In this video, I talk about tips for beginners who are just getting into miniature painting. Warning, Uncle Adam is not a professional. He's usually not even very good. Try any and all of Uncle Adam's pro tips at your own risk. Void where prohibited, Uncle Adam is not actually an uncle. Earlier today on the Tabletop Minions Paint Showcase Club on Facebook, which you should join if you haven't already. There's a lot of great pictures and models on there and, and epic threads like this one. Uh, a guy named Brandon May asked a question that sparked a pretty epic thread. Any tips for someone who is about to paint their first army? There were a lot of answers, and I started to read through them, and I kind of saw a lot of the same thing over and over again, and I also noticed how a lot of them weren't just for people who were starting to paint their first army, but for people who were starting to paint their first models, kind of for the first time. One of them that was the most popular, that most people said, was thin your paints. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what that means, you're going to add a little bit of water to your acrylic paints so you're not taking it straight out of the pot and putting it directly onto the model. When you do that, the paint has a tendency to be thick, sort of kludgy, so you want to thin your paints. And one of the best ways to thin your paints, uh, those of you who have been uh, fans of the channel for a while, will know that you want to build yourself a wet palette. If you want to see a video about how to build yourself a wet palette out of things that you have in your kitchen, Pachow, it's right there. It's one of my more popular videos. And the wet palette allows you to take paint out of the pot, put it into the, onto the palette, and it stays wet. You can add water to it. If you take it and put it right on a plastic plate or a piece of tile and add a little bit of water to it, it will dry out, sometimes in less than a minute. This wet palette will keep that paint wet so you can keep thinning it and keep putting on layer after layer, and you can go for hours, if not days. Another important thing is to not get overwhelmed and to not do all of your models at once. If you're doing a bigger army, or even if you're doing a smaller army, but this is your, you know, kind of your, your first things, work in small groups. Some people only want to work on five models at a time. Some people only work at one at a time, and that's fine. But when you're doing, let's say, an army where a lot of guys have to look the same, you usually kind of paint in sort of an assembly line. Some people will do it in groups of five. Some people do it in groups of 10. I can do it in about up to groups of 12. If they're easy to paint models like skeletons or something like that, beyond that, and I get kind of overwhelmed. So find your rhythm and work in small groups and you're going to be a lot happier. Another one that's not just important for painting miniatures, but it's important for life. It's a virtue and that is patience. Make sure that you kind of work a little slowly to start to kind of get your legs under you. Nobody starts out as a rock star or a movie star or a best-selling author. They all have to build up to it. And you have to do that too with painting. Understand that some of the first models that you do, you may not like them once you've done your 50th model. So you can always go back, you know, and strip them if you have to. But have some patience and understand that it's going to take some time and, and it's a process. Another thing that I've talked about before uh, that was talked about in this thread was test models. And related to test models, it's also documenting what you're doing. You can either start on models that you buy on eBay that are junk, or you can start on, I don't know, plastic army men from the grocery store, whatever you want, and do some tests and some colors. And once you find your recipe, you need to write it down step by step because there may be a time six months from now when you want to add a bunch of more stuff to your army. And you may not remember what you did after you painted the gold, but before you did the, uh, the leggings, you know, or whatever. You have to keep track of that stuff because... You, there's always going to be little nuances, even if your memory is amazing, which is mine is not, you're, you're going to find that it's important to be able to go back and look at it. I keep that stuff in my phone in an app, and then that I, I can read it you know, straight out of a notes app in there, and then I never have to go, where did I put that piece of paper? Because if I can't remember the paint process, I'm certainly not going to remember where I wrote it down. Another thing that I think makes a lot of sense for people, both who are building an army, or people who are just even starting out, start out with kind of regular troops if you can. You know, uh, if you're building a model uh, or a model army, you know, whether it's for something like 40K or whether it's for something like War Machine or whatever, if you start out with the normal kind of regular foot soldiers and then build up to the cool, super big machines or crazy awesome looking leaders, you're probably going to be happier with that. If you start some of your earliest models in the project on the really fancy guys, you might not be happy with the result when you're all done. So work up to those guys, and that'll help you out. In certain games, let's say like something like, um, well, in 40K, for example, if you can at least paint two troop units and then one HQ unit, 
a leader, you can now you now have technically a viable army because that's the bare minimum you need to play that game. Other games are different, but in something like that, you now have something that you can at least play with on the table while you work on the other guys. And then that kind of gives you a respite from thinking, oh, I got to paint so many of these guys. You can actually play with them. So that's kind of a bonus. Lastly, remember that it's about having fun. You are painting models and you should hopefully enjoy doing that. And those models are for a game, which should bring you enjoyment. So don't get too discouraged. Uh, if you aren't happy with what you got, you can always strip it. Don't Constantly look at uh, other people's work and go, man, if I just could paint like that guy, that guy probably spent a lot of time, a lot of years. Um, the, that woman, maybe over there, she, she probably has won a bunch of awards, but she's been painting for 15 years. So don't compare yourself like that. I did a video about that a while back as well. Um, Pachow. Understand that you're getting started and you need to build up, but uh, make sure you're still having fun. If you're not enjoying yourself and having fun, it's not really a hobby then. It's more like work and you don't want it to become work. So make sure that at the end of the day, and this is, to be fair, really kind of important in almost anything in life, make sure you're at least having a good time. I find painting to be very stress relieving and I enjoy it. I can listen to stuff on my headphones while I'm doing the same thing. A lot of other people really in love go love gaming more than anything, but make sure that you're enjoying it because if you're not, really like what's the point? 